Hey yo, what's going on everyone? Nathan here. So this video is gonna be slightly different than ones that I normally make on my channel, but I definitely think that this can help out a lot of people who are like on the fence of what major to go to in engineering. Just really get a better understanding of what it's like to be a mechanical engineer. So when I was back in high school applying for colleges and really deciding on like which major I wanted to go into, I was actually searching this exact thing on YouTube and there wasn't much out there. There was tips, there was like days in the lives of mechanical engineers, but there really wasn't anything like what to fully expect from the full experience. And so that's what I'm trying to portray to you today. So I just wanna put it out there. I'm not making this video to like scare anyone or to like deter people away from pursuing this major as it really will challenge you. It'll make you a smarter, better person, more resilient. And it is also a great opportunity outside of college afterwards and you can make a lot of money doing this as well. So before I get into the actual experience of being a mechanical engineer in college, I just wanted to kind of give you the background of where I am in life right now. So I am currently in my first semester, my senior year at Syracuse University studying mechanical engineering. And so now I've had three and a half years of just grinding with this major and I definitely have seen it all from the good to the bad. And I just wanted to give everyone like what I've been through and how I can give you tips on how to succeed in this major. So the first thing I want to get into is the amount of class time, like actual lecture time you have versus the amount of credit hours that you will be taking. I have consistently had to take anywhere between 17 to 19 credits each semester as this major just requires a higher level of credits to get the degree compared to other majors. And even though you're only taking between the 17 and 19, your schedule is so packed with just lectures, recitations, labs, they all intertwine with the classes and it's a lot of time in class. So many of the classes you take will meet three or four times a week, whether it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday with a recitation in there somewhere or a Tuesday, Thursday, and then another recitation you do meet a lot for each individual class. So as you can see here, this is one of my past semesters I've taken, and I just have a lot of classes. I have a lot of lectures for the amount of credits I'm taking. I have some friends in other majors who are taking like 14, 15 credits, and those two to three credits really make a difference in other majors. Like their schedules look so light compared to these. And that's just one thing to keep in mind when going into this major is that you're gonna have a lot of class time. And because there's so many classes you have to take, you can probably say goodbye to having Fridays off on a semester. I have a lot of friends in not in engineering and like ever since the first semester, they've never had a Friday class. They can just plan their schedules out that way. But me, like all my like, required classes, a lot of them every single semester landed on a Friday. Like one, one semester I had a Friday with four classes on it and they were all mandatory. And so it's gonna be really tough to get like some off days. So now the next thing that you should be prepared for are the labs. You're gonna have to take a lot of labs throughout college and they range from anywhere around two hours or there'll be blocks where they're about three hours. And some of them like chemistry lab will pretty much go the whole time and then there are some of them like physics too, which usually ended pretty short, but there's a lot of labs and then they also come with a lot of work. And most of these labs are like one credit classes. And these lab reports are pretty daunting. Like they range in size between five pages and then I've made a couple over a hundred pages with code. But the thing about these lab reports is like you can't really like fake it till you make it with them because you just have to explain like in-depth analysis and theory behind what your experiment just was and why it worked or why it didn't. And you have to prove it mathematically, theoretically. And so you can't really just like fluff these up and that's what makes them so challenging, I believe. So some of the labs I've taken throughout my college career have been like the intro to mechanical engineering lab. I took first semester, I've taken chemistry, physics one, two, electrical engineering lab, I had a senior mechanical, and then by far my worst lab was MAE 315, which is the aerospace mechanical lab for juniors. Everyone dreads this. It is the most amount of work that you will ever have to do for a single class. There's only four labs. After the lab, you would have this huge like assignment to do, and all of it was through code. It's like we used MATLAB, that was our coding language we used here. And you would code these graphs, like 80, 100 graphs, and then it's just, it was like 2,000 to 3,000 lines of code just for plotting the data, which took hours. Like I was, 
That whole semester, I was in the computer lab coding, writing lab reports every single weekend. Like I didn't have a weekend off. I couldn't go out. That was probably the, the worst semester with that one class on top of everything else I was taking. But these lab reports ranged from 80 to like 120 pages. And it was just a lot, a lot of time. I probably spent like 70 to 80 hours on each of them. So the next thing I wanna go over is the homework load. You're gonna have a lot of homework. It makes sense though, because to learn math, it's, it's very repetition. It's like practice it, practice it, practice it, and then you learn the patterns, you learn how to use equations, the, the processes to solve these problems. And so it makes sense, but a lot of your classes will have multiple homeworks due a week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, usually a Tuesday, Thursday, you'll have them due for specific classes. And it's not like other classes, I've taken a couple of pre-rec electives, like psych, and for that class, you had like one homework due a week one like little like blackboard quiz or something like that. But now with engineering classes, there's a lot of homework and they take a lot of time to do as well. And you're probably gonna have a homework assignment due like every single day, bar Saturdays, I would say. And these homeworks, they range depending on the class, like calc, you could have just like a bunch of problems to do. But when you start getting up to like the higher engineering classes, you'll have classes where the homework is like two questions and they just take forever to do. I just had one for my finite element analysis class. Two problems took me like 10 hours to do between coding, figuring out all the integration, integrating by parts, the matrices. It's a lot of work, these homeworks, and you gotta be prepared for that. And you gotta make sure you put school first when doing these homeworks. So then the next thing to be prepared for are the number of exams you have to take. So very similar to the homework, how it's repetition and you cover so much material in each class, there's a lot of exams. Each class probably has four exams and then a final, or three exams and then your fourth one will be a final. I know a lot of other electives out there, there's a midterm and a final. So what I've seemed to notice is about every quarter of a semester, so every three to four weeks, you get swamped with work. So not only are you gonna have just like your normal weekly homework due, but then you're gonna have an exam, multiple exams in that week coming up. If you really put in the time and effort into it, it's very doable and you can do it. You just gotta like prioritize your time, where you spend it, when you go out, and you will be able to make it through, I promise. So now the next thing that I've really noticed that I didn't think about before I got here are your professors. So this is a very challenging major and there's a lot of room to cheat between Chegg and working with other people on homework. So a lot of these professors have just become very strict. They're not very forgiving. They're not very lenient on assignments and due dates. If you're late to turn into homework, they're probably just gonna give you a zero and you're gonna be very on top of it, very with it. So one way to like combat this is just to be very organized. Whether you use an agenda or an agenda app on your iPad or, or phone or whatever, you gotta make sure you keep in track of all of your due dates of homework and assignments and make sure you kind of stay on top of that. I even think that some of these professors are like out to get us. So if there's like low attendance in a class one day, they might just toss out like a pop quiz just because of the low attendance. And it's really, I don't really appreciate that at all. I don't think that's right. Yeah, I agree attendance is important as it kind of keeps the class going, but that is something I have noticed as well. They really do like to get you with those like gotcha moments. And so the last thing to keep in mind is that mechanical engineering is a very broad major. Because it's so broad, you'll be able to go into like the most job opportunities after college. But with that, you also just learn a little bit of everything. You cover a little bit of everything. You don't really go super deep into detail on one specific thing. So for me, I chose mechanical engineering because I would love to work for a large tech company one day and be on their design team. I would love to work with like AutoCAD or SolidWorks, 3D model, prototype and design their future, like the future iPhone, future tablets, laptops. I wanna make beautiful tech. And so I went into that because I knew I would use SolidWorks or AutoCAD eventually, right? So I've used some sort of 3D modeling software in two of my classes so far out of I don't even know how many I've taken. And so it's really like let me down as I feel like I haven't gotten the full experience as to like what I want to learn. So even though I haven't gotten much designing, I've gotten a whole lot of math though. I got calculus, physics, differential equations, thermodynamics, heat transfer, fluid dynamics, 
statics, mechanics of solids, just the list goes on and on. So if you have a very specific thing that you wanna do with mechanical engineering, keep in mind that you're probably only gonna get a little bit of that throughout your major and they're not gonna tailor in specifically on that one thing that you wanna do. So I know all that probably seemed like a lot and you're probably discouraged right now about going into this major, but I promise you it will be worth it. And here are some tips that I've picked up throughout my years that I hope will help you as well. So one of the main things is you have to manage your time properly. You're gonna have to miss out on parties. You're gonna have to miss out on going out in the middle of the week. You're gonna have to get up early to do everything you have to do in a day to fit in school work time. And realistically, I would say, if you really wanna excel in mechanical engineering, then you can probably only do one to two other main things throughout your daily life here. So whether that be a job or a club, two clubs in your major. So for me, mine are my RA, which I would consider my job, and then working out. Besides that, you gotta focus a lot of time on your major and your time management to allow you free time to hang out with friends, have a social life afterwards. You can't spread yourself too thin joining a whole bunch of clubs because then you just don't have enough time in the day or you're gonna wear yourself out and that's probably the last thing you wanna do. So the next tip I wanna give you is to make a friend group in your major. I meet up with my engineering friends almost daily throughout the week to work on homework, work on lab reports, just different things here and there. And as like you funnel through all like the prereqs and everything, you really kind of get to like your core mechanical engineering friends by junior year. And you just get really close with them. You're spending so much time in these like classes of like 25, 45 people, whatever it's gonna be. And if you have that friend group, it's such a good support. You're all going through the same thing together. You're all up late at night, studying on weekends, doing lab reports, projects, you're all doing it together. And it really helps you like not feel alone because you can feel pretty alone when you're just grinding schoolwork all the time. And not only that, but having people there to ask questions with, bounce ideas off of, it's such a huge help. You have to like make a friend group within mechanical engineering if you really wanna like succeed and have a good time with it as well. And so now the next tip I wanna give you is get checked. So I'm not saying get checked to cheat. Don't cheat, don't get caught and get like an academic integrity thing on your record. That's not what I'm saying. Chegg is a great resource when you're stuck on a homework you've been working on for hours and you just don't know what else to do. It's late at night and your professor probably won't respond to you. You Chegg it and it's like, it teaches you. It can teach you more than like going through the lecture slides at problems that don't even tailor to the homework you're working on. I have learned so much from using Chegg, just from going through the step-by-step -step process in my own notes, like I'll make notes of it. And then so when it comes time for like the exam, I'm more prepared because I learned the processes through what Chegg showed me, than instead of me just sitting there and struggling and not getting anywhere. But if you're gonna use Chegg, please be careful that it's not the wrong answer or that it's not a trap set up by your professor. Professors do set up traps with Chegg and you just gotta be careful. I recommend looking at like the, the up votes versus the down votes. There's a high ratio, you know, it's probably pretty reliable, but use it to learn, don't use it to cheat. And then the last tip I can give you is to just keep in the back of your mind that this is all gonna be worth it. When you're in the computer lab and the code keeps failing and you're not able to get the problem you want or you get a bad grade on an exam you studied hours for, just remember that it's all gonna be worth it. You're gonna walk across that stage and it is gonna feel amazing. You mentally completed one of the hardest majors you can in college and it's just, I can't wait for that and I know it's gonna be so rewarding and you just gotta keep that in your mind. Not only just like the satisfaction of completing it, but also the job opportunities, where you can go with life, the money you're gonna be making, you're gonna be financially set. So one thing that my first semester professor told me is that engineers are the easiest to go from one field to another. A lot of other companies, just anything else like marketing, sales, whatever, they will take engineers on because they know how hardworking they are, they know that they're smart. And the thing about the engineering programs is that they teach you to problem solve. You become a professional problem solver. It rewires your brain. You learn how to utilize the tools and resources that are available to you and that you know within your head to solve these problems. 
and other industries love that. So when you get out into like the field and if you don't love what you're doing in engineering, you can most likely transfer over to whatever else because employers will see that you're a mechanical engineer and they're gonna be like, wow, this person really is a grinder and that they are probably like really capable to do whatever job that is as well. So that's been my experience here at Syracuse being a mechanical engineer. I'm sure it's very similar to other ABET accredited schools. And I just wanted to like really give you like stuff that you should expect if you're going into mechanical engineering. And I really hope that I helped you. I helped kind of calm some nerves. You've got this, I know you do. I was super nervous when I first got into like my major. I didn't know what I was walking into, but you just gotta grit it down, you gotta be determined, and you will be fine just like I've been. So if you learned something new in this video or if I just helped you out, then please drop a like down below and subscribe as I don't want you to miss anything else I have in the future. And with that being said, have a great day everyone, and cheers.